Hi Cuies, here's Alexandra and welcome to another painting tutorial. Well, uh, of public demand uh, I now so uh, make a painting tutorial about the slap chop method. Yes, I know the name is stupid, but it is supposed to be stupid so that uh, people can uh, easily remember it. <laughs> so, um, here we have uh, Orc from Mantic Games, um, primed in black. So. Um, the main thing uh, for the slap chop method is quite easy. You uh, dry brush a black uh, primed miniature uh, with grey and then with white and then uh, we apply contrast paint to it. Um, for the dry brushing purpose uh, we use a, a very soft brush. This here is an uh, eyeshadow brush. Um, they come in uh, several different uh, sizes and shapes and uh, here we have a round version, this here is a flat uh, so-called uh, cat tongue, then uh, maybe in this size. <coughs> Sometimes uh, you can also use a normal dry brush from Games Workshop. Uh, the main goal here is uh, that you have a soft bristled brush. So uh, then we take a mid-tone grey, give it a good shake. Apply some on your palette. <clears throat> then, like usual for dry brushing purposes, we uh, rinse off uh, most of the paint uh, on a paper towel. And then we uh, simply start applying the grey on the miniature. Our goal here is uh, to keep the uh, darkest recesses in black. Um, but the main body of the miniature should be grey. So uh, we are doing this in an overall uh, manner, not just uh, Xenotrope. <coughs> if you don't know what Xenotrope means, uh, um, there is a pre-shading uh, method called Xenotrope highlighting, uh, where you take a, a black prime miniature and then you spray uh, bright colors from above and uh, leave the shadow areas uh, underneath. This is called pre-shading or zenithal highlighting, uh, but we are using the slap chop method and the slap chop is uh, overall uh, highlighting. So we don't worry about uh, any of that, we just apply the gray. And it's already done. Then we take uh, our white we don't even uh, worry about uh, cleaning the brush. <coughs> Put it on your palette. Give it a really, really, really good uh, rinse on the paper towel. Until we have barely anything left. And then we uh, gently stroke over the top parts here. Very gently. We want uh, to have some grey left, not only white, so we have a nice distinction between the uh, shadows and the highlights. See like here for example on the... <coughs> what it's called? Uh, coat? Yeah, coat should be the word to go with here. Also here, defining the muscles on the miniature, defining the wood structure on the <coughs> on the weapon. <coughs> Down here at the feet. Okay. <coughs> uh, and now I'm going for an even brighter white. This was here. Corax white. It's named uh, this uh, white color here from uh, Citadel always gets a bad rap because it is not white. Yes, uh, just uh, uh, cut out the white and uh, say gray. Base Corax gray and everybody's happy. <laughs> so <clears throat> it's just named wrong. The color is perfectly fine, it's a good covering, very bright grey, and uh, so we use it as a very bright grey. 
Now, uh, final highlight with white. On the furthest edges and spots. Then we are already good to go. Okay, this is uh, the step of the dry brushing done. Uh, we will now switch to contrast paints. Be right back. So, and there we are back. Um, now we uh, start with the contrast paints. Uh, this is an orc, obviously, and uh, for orc skin tone, there you have uh, several different options. Uh, you could go with a, a very dark green here, with a militarum green, or uh, with a more uh, a bluish green tone with warp lightning. Uh, I personally uh, like the combination of Black Wearer Flash and uh, Tesseract Glow. It gives a nice uh, vibrant green tone. Uh, this is already uh, a mixture here. Um, and uh, yeah, we will uh, start applying that to the skin. Why are we starting with the skin? Well, that's uh, quite easy to answer. We are painting the miniature from inside to the outside. And the most inside uh, uh, thing on the miniature is obviously the skin tone. And as you can see, this uh, green gives a nice uh, bright green, but uh, also some uh, really nice darks in the shadows. So I'll remove that from the eye stocks. Or eye socks, not, not socks, <clears throat> you know what I mean, the holes where the eyes are, <laughs> eye holes, yeah, I guess he has gloves on, yeah, then <clears throat> let's leave the hand out, So if you're painting one miniature at a time uh, with this method, uh, you probably have to uh, wait quite a lot because uh, when we are finished with one area, you should wait until it is dry before you continue. Because, uh, well, if you uh, hit another area with a contrast paint um, that is still wet, then the contrast paints will mix and uh, it will... Uh, well, create an um, ugly mix tone, and that uh, is not what we want. So, uh, in order to avoid that, you should wait until it is dry. If you are uh, definitely with this match, uh, method here, batch painting, then you uh, don't have to worry about that. You uh, make the green tone for all 10 miniatures, for example, that you are painting, and uh, when you're done with that step, uh, on the first miniature, the paint is already dry. Contrast paints uh, have uh, a tendency to uh, dry really quickly, especially if you uh, apply them relatively thin. And uh, we're not doing here super thick coats. We want to uh, uh, well use the advantage of the uh, slap chop method to uh, really have the contrast paint shine through. You see that here directly. That uh, the highlights we had painted with the white and the gray tones are coming through when we uh, just apply a thin coat. There we go. So um, I will continue not now with uh, some uh, wild wood. This is a really dark brown. Uh, contrast paints uh, have the tendency uh, to have three different uh, kinds of colors. You have the very weak uh, contrast paints um, that are barely covering. Um, you could almost categorize them as a wash instead of a contrast paint. Then you have uh, the, I would say, normal contrast paint that, uh, yeah, does what contrast paints does best. It uh, leaves um, good shadow areas and also good highlights. And then you have uh, the uh, contrast paint number three that is 
almost 100% covering. You see here on the wood, it's barely visible the highlights we uh, painted in. But uh, for a dark wood tone, that it's it's absolutely uh, okay. So uh, let's see what else can we use. Let's uh, use Agoros Dunes, for example, on the fur, the pelt that he has uh, around his backside here. Just to give you an example on different colors that we can use. So uh, I could also paint now the leather straps here around uh, his belly, but uh, I will leave that uh, until the uh, skin tone is dry. So I'm not interfering with the skin color. Yeah. Should be good. Okay, next, uh, let's take. <laughs> what could we take? Uh, let's give him red pants. Why not? Blood angels right here. And you see the application is rather simple. And that's basically the slip chop method for you. <clears throat> you see? Um, the trick is to uh, not paint over the areas that you uh, dang it, <clears throat> that you already painted. If you're quick you can Remove the still wet contrast paints. Yeah, uh, you see there, uh, tiny little specks of red. The contrast paint uh, has a tendency to really, really quickly stain the edges uh, of uh, the area that you just painted. So be careful with your application. <clears throat> that you don't uh, overpaint. But other than that, uh, yeah, that's uh, the method for you. Uh, I will quickly now uh, finish uh, the rest of the miniature uh, with the, uh, well, the little details uh, we have left here. And, uh, well, I'll show you then the uh, final result. Be right back. Okay, here you can uh, see now the uh, final result of our uh, first application of all the contrast paints. Uh, as you can see, I have uh, left out the uh, weapon. Um, the colors I've used here, uh, this here is um, uh, Nasdrak Yellow, then uh, Snakebite Leather for the uh, all the bells and the pouch here, uh, Fire Slayer Flash uh, for the gloves, then obviously uh, uh, Blood Angels Red here for uh, his loincloth, that was the word I was uh, looking for. Yeah, uh, I've uh, quickly dry brushed uh, and stippled a little bit uh, the base. And uh, now we go for uh, the metal part. Uh, for that I use a, a bright metal here, in this case a scale color heavy metal. But you could uh, also use Stormhost silver or uh, Mythyl silver or any other uh, bright metal color. Uh, we take a little bit uh, on our palette. Uh, here. And then uh, we water it down with uh, two drops of water. There we go. To make uh, our own uh, wash variant. <coughs> this is uh, obviously not contrast paint, but uh, it will do the trick. We will uh, just apply that uh, quickly here over the metal. And as you can see, the pre shading uh, will do its job and uh, will leave the uh, surface in a metal sheen. When this is dry, uh, we can uh, hit it with uh, some uh, known oil, 
wash and uh, it will be uh, totally okay. So at this stage uh, the miniature is done. It is uh, now what Games Workshop calls battle ready. Um, this is basically um, the slap chop method uh, to its uh, final conclusion. Uh, from this point on you can uh, now go to uh, use slap chop plus. Uh, and for that I leave that here uh, now to dry and be right back in a second. So Tubies, there I'm back and uh, welcome to the part where we uh, go over Slapchop Plus. What is that? Well, Slapchop Plus is uh, basically you uh, take the Slapchop miniature like that and you improve upon uh, the paint job with uh, some extra highlights to, uh, well, increase the uh, overall value of the miniature. Uh, if you are painting hordes of tyranids and uh, orcs and goblins and uh, hopgrots and uh, how they are all called, um, then this uh, might not apply to you, but uh, if you uh, want to, uh, well, increase uh, the look of your miniatures, you can uh, start this here. Um, what I'm doing here is now uh, take some uh, known oil and, uh, well, I will increase the uh, shade value of some uh, areas. Just here and there. Where you think uh, that a dark black shadow would appear. And, uh, yeah, just apply some additional non oil and we are already good to go so here would be uh, the shadow from uh, the axe the axe shaft then maybe here in the back side uh, would be a little bit darker here underneath So, and after that, we will apply some uh, highlights. So, um, for the skin tone, uh, I would say we uh, take ourselves some very bright green. Here, in this case, I take a Toxic Waste Green SFG25 from uh, Scale Color, the Fantasy range. A little bit on my palette. And we are simply uh, touching up some of the high spots on the miniature. Like here at his face, then uh, maybe here on his muscles, some uh, top spots. In this uh, context we are also uh, cleaning up some of the uh, so-called uh, coffee stains that uh, some of the slap chop method uh, left behind on the highest uh, highlight points and making uh, the overall look on the miniature a little bit more clean. Just barely touching here, just applying very, very minute uh, amounts on the highlight. Also in this step you can uh, create some uh, additional highlights here and there. Yeah, that looks uh, already quite good. Now let's uh, just add a little bit of white to the color to give it this uh, absolutely, absolutely final oomph. <coughs> For the highest of the high spots. There on the nose. 
little bit here on the tip of the ear, the cheekbone, just barely, barely touching, just a little, just a little dot here and there. There we go. And I would say, <clears throat> the miniature's done. Yeah, that's uh, the Slap Chop Plus, just uh, accentuating a little bit uh, of the colors. We could also do that uh, for the red. So let's quickly do that. Let's take a very bright red that we have here, almost orange. Uh, Aldebaran red, for example. And give that red even a little bit more oomph here on the on the edges of his loincloth. See, it's quite easy, and uh, that you can actually apply to everything on a miniature. <clears throat> Every little detail you can pick out and uh, highlight even more or uh, go ahead and now uh, pick out with silver all this light, tiny little uh, rings and details uh, that we have missed. Uh, we could uh, paint his teeth or uh, any other uh, shenanigans. Uh, the uh, Slapchop Plus is then just basically normal painting on the miniature. But yeah, that's uh, a slap job for you. Uh, I hope you like this uh, little tutorial and uh, you will uh, now go ahead and uh, paint the swarms. Um, also, for what miniatures slap job is uh, very good and uh, what miniatures is not so good. Obviously, uh, busy miniatures like this orc here, for example, or Tyranids, uh, Termaguns, Hormaguns, uh, then um, orcs and goblins in general, everything that is uh, has rough textures on it, like fur, like uh, cloth and uh, heavy bling bling on uh, the miniature. Those miniatures uh, will really benefit from the slap chop method to uh, make them uh, quite easily painted. Miniatures that are not uh, very good for slap chop method uh, are miniatures with large flat surfaces like Space Marines, uh, Stormcast Eternals and so on. Those would benefit from a, a more traditional paint job. But uh, if you have hordes of miniatures to paint, then yeah, obviously slap chop is there for you. I hope you like this and we see us in the next video. You're Alexandra. Bye.